Pro-Chancellor, Pro-Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and above all graduands, proud friends and family, it's a huge joy as well as a privilege to welcome you to Coventry Cathedral on behalf of the Dean and Chapter. Our close association with Coventry Cathedral means a great deal to us here, and it's a real delight to be together to celebrate after all the challenges of recent times. Of course, our cathedral is no stranger to struggle, challenge and loss. Behind you, you can see the ruins of our medieval building, standing as a stark reminder of humanity's destructive capacity. But we're gathered today in our new cathedral, which is itself a powerful symbol of how we may overcome the difficulties of the past and discover new beginnings rooted in peace and reconciliation. We believe that our building encourages us all to look forward to the future with hope and with purpose. And that, of course, is what today is all about. Together, we look forward with hope as we celebrate all that hard work that has brought you to this point and all the achievements that you are here to celebrate. Through the pandemic, your resilience, your keeping focus no matter what, makes your generation of graduates particularly praiseworthy and we all salute you for your tenacity through some really tough times. A housekeeping note. In case of emergency, we're not planning to test any alarms today. So if you do hear an alarm, please follow the direction of the stewards who will guide you to the safest exit, either through the doors at the back of the cathedral through which you arrived, or down the stairs to my right, your left, under the organ pipes. Graduands, as one chapter ends for you today, we pray God's richest blessing on all that is to come. We are thrilled to share this celebration with you and hope that when you go from here, you will carry with you many wonderful memories of your time in Coventry and our warmest wishes and congratulations to go well and visit often. Thank you. Reverend Fleming, I speak for everyone here present when I thank you for your kind welcome and for sharing with us this magnificent and fitting venue. But now I must turn your attention to our VIPs. Today is all about you. It marks the end of one chapter and the beginning of another exciting adventure in your lives. It represents the culmination of your hard work sacrifice and dedication. The award ceremonies are a highlight of the university calendar and it is a great pleasure to see so many of you here today to join in this celebration of achievement. Without further ado, I invite John Dishman, the university's Pro Vice-Chancellor, to start the proceedings. Honoured guests and graduates, esteemed colleagues, friends and family from across the world. It is my pleasure to share a few thoughts with you on this day of celebration, achievement and community. Firstly, congratulations. Your hard work and study have culminated today in your award. Well done. Congratulations also to your family and friends who share in your successes and achievements today. You can be immensely proud. We say that to every cohort of graduation ceremonies, but of course, you have succeeded in a very different environment. The pandemic forced us to live, work and study in very different ways. All of our graduates leave us with an array of attributes that go way beyond their academic qualifications, but you leave with a resilience and determination forged through adapting to life during and after the coronavirus restrictions. Coventry is ranked as the best modern university in the Midlands and in the top 30 in the world for international students. We achieve more than some expect of us in large part because of what you achieve. I hope you've exceeded your own expectations. 
You sit today among your colleagues and peers. On the stage behind me are some of the academic staff who have supported your journey. What you have achieved individually has been possible because of the work of others too. They have helped you. You have contributed to their success. It's been a partnership. Success and excellence come from a commitment to make a change, from a willingness to innovate and try new things, to overcome challenges and from working with others. And I believe these to be very Coventry traits. They are strong values in our city and have deep roots at Coventry University. Throughout this city's long history, we have adapted in the changing world to find new purpose and success. From ribbon weaving to car manufacturing, from the ashes of war and destruction to a modern university city ready to embrace the opportunities of the latest digital technology. Coventry reimagines, renews and looks ahead. We are committed to creating better futures. We invent and create and we are proud to do so by working with others. That is the Coventry way, and it is built into the values of this university. Sometimes our partners are from this city and region, local industry, artists, community groups, our hospitals and other institutions. And sometimes our partners are global, from universities overseas, international businesses or research collaborators. Your achievements, which we are celebrating today, are the product of those partnerships and collaborations. They are the combination of your hard work and the ethos of this irrepressible city. That is why you are all Coventrians today. You inherit a legacy alongside your award of centuries of creativity, invention and collaboration, and you are in good company. You join a Coventry University community of tens of thousands which reaches around the world. We are creative and innovative, we work together and we make a difference. I encourage you to find others who share that same ethos and spirit and I also encourage you to stay close to Coventry. You will always be welcome, you will always find new ideas and people to support you here and I wish you every success. Thank you. Thank you, Pro Vice Chancellor, for your address. You have placed today's ceremony in context. You have reminded us that Coventry is a successful university that takes pride from the many achievements of its students. We now move to the presentation of the awards. As you will see from the brochure, awards will be presented course by course. You are very welcome to applaud all the candidates' achievements but please do this at the end of each group of names, usually a group of three names as read out by our orator. <clears throat> it is my pleasure to invite Sean Hydes, Academic Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, to present the awards, which you will find on page 17 of your brochure. Bachelor of Science in Architecture, Grace Ben Nathan, Benedicta Ofusua Okiyiri. <clears throat> Bachelor of Arts in English, Miles Bradley Croxford, Magdalena Marge. Bachelor of Arts in English and Creative Writing, Sanjay Nasim Sahid. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Graphic Design, Arturs Malmestos.
Bachelor of Arts in Interior Architecture and Design, Ayman Hasif bin Adnan. Bachelor of Arts in International Relations, Sultan Saeed Humaid Al Hashimi, Mangaka Mbiyavanga Ndombasi, <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Media and Communications, Chantal Chietza Nyamana. Bachelor of Arts in Politics, William Robertson. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Sociology, Lois Howard. <laughs> Postgraduate Diploma in International Relations, Imran Hussein. Master of Architecture, Tagwa Abdelazim Ahmed Osman, Rajani Shrestha. Master of Arts in Automotive and Transport Design, Joao Manuel Castelbranco de Castillo Neva. Oma El Hudna, Daniel Fernandez Codoy, Callum Hall, Vivek Sharad Maratha, Akash Ravi Gunaga. Sandy Kumar Vasiredi. <laughs> Master of Arts in Communication, Culture and Media. Modogpeye Adams. <laughs> Matthew Adaimensa Jr. <laughs> Ofure Amenkienen. Violet Amush Anyerobi, Esosa Awimade Edigin, Mosope Yanuoluwa Fagbulu, Yuan Li, Rory McDermott. Yusuf Musafari, <laughs> Taiwo Timelehin Ogunimo, Titilope Ruth Owoiyi, <laughs> Master of Arts in Contemporary Arts Practice, Lynn Langton. Master of Arts in Design Management, Nishant Chautari, Anne Lee Edwards. <laughs> Nirupama Komaranini, Dao Nyem Tian Fuok. Master of Arts in Diplomacy, Law and Global Change. Martina Adu Giafli. <laughs> Olufiseo Bisola Akinkwebi. Laura Lami Amlogu, also awarded the course Tutors Prize.
Mihaela Veronica Ariton also awarded the course tutors prize. Alberta Atamar, Amira Kezadaha, Adam Lenani, Musa Faki Mohammed Mohammed, Dufan Thelma Senden, Master of Arts in English Language Teaching and Applied Linguistics, Humara Khatun Tosifamed Alvi, Farida Butt, also awarded the Course Tutors Prize. Azhar Ud Din Khan, Asia Saeed, Bianca Elena Vazduaga, <laughs> Master of Arts in English and Education Management, Nazish Iqbal. Master of Arts in Graphic Design, Charles Berwick. Ines Duarte da Cruz Meia Vicente. Roshita Gatupali. <laughs> Jefferson Justin Pereira. Vinyesh Ramachandran. Svapna Favidabonya. Master of Arts in Illustration and Animation, Mrinmayi Ashish Kulkani, Yingya Ma, Surabi Vinay Sagdeo, Yiyang Shen. Master of Arts in Interior Design, Sufia Fatima. <laughs> Divyesh Keshubai Padhiya. <laughs> Sharon Saji Parel. Raja Prabhu Raja Rathinam. Seya Saif, Nadita Vidyapuspita, <laughs> Master of Arts in International Relations, Tobeshi Albert Magnus Anozzi, Eluma Kennedy Asogwa, also awarded the Simon Massey Prize. Chukwudi Victor Ekeji, Serat Firat Ipekchi, Ubongabasi Friday Ewok, Shalom Na Kailaria, Enesta Masalathulini, Franklin Uzoma Nwagba, Aziz Oleinka Sunmola, Jane Chidinma Sylvester, also awarded the Course Tutors Prize. <laughs> Abdullahi Bamanga Tafida, Esiat Kehindi Wuli, Master of Arts in Painting, Nicholas Charles James, <laughs> Wenzhuang Lu,
Master of Arts in Product Design Innovation, Ines Matilde Correa Costa. Master of Arts in Professional Creative Writing, Richard Adam Horton. Eden Tesfagaba. Alexandria Allison Julia Wright, also awarded the Course Tutors Prize. <laughs> Master of Arts in Terrorism, International Crime and Global Security. Mania Mania Abukur. <laughs> Poppy Begum, also awarded the Simon Massey Prize. Georgia D. Emmanuel Gira, also awarded the Course Tutors Prize. <laughs> Sienna Echo McNeil. Olajide Olasahinde. <laughs> Eseogene Precious of Wigil. James Daniel Pays also awarded the Simon Massey Prize. <laughs> Diya Ali Tilly, Charlotte Whitsey, Sam Williams. It is now the university's great pleasure to confer an honorary Doctor of Letters on Ahmad Nawaz in recognition of his significant promotion of peace and tolerance. Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, distinguished friends, colleagues, graduates, and guests and families. It's my real privilege and pleasure to introduce one of our honorary graduates today here to celebrate with our students today, Ahmed Nawaz. He and I and all in this city share a passion for peace. At a time when this peace is so fragile and in many places families are not able to celebrate as we are today. So I ask for a moment for us to reflect on that as we continue our celebrations of such achievement. Since his mid-teens, Abman has been an activist for peace and education. He's an ambassador for a number of charities, touring schools to speak about his personal experience of surviving a terrorist attack against the school he was in where he seeks to educate against radicalization and hate. One of the main charities Ahmed works for is the Anne Frank Trust, alongside fellow ambassador and Holocaust survivor, Mindu Hornick, who is also celebrating here with us today. Ahmed's work has been recognized by the UK government, working with the UK Home Office as a speaker against extremism as a member of the National Counter-Extremism Youth Advisory Board, and he's also a speaker on interfaith issues for the Oxford Foundation. Ahmed's received many awards for his work, including the Prime Minister's Point of Light Award, the Diana Legacy Award, and Pride of Birmingham Award, amongst many others. He's also led a nationwide campaign launched by the UK government called Action Counters Terrorism, ACT, to inspire young people to speak out to help prevent atrocities taking place in the UK and overseas. It's all these remarkable achievements that truly reflect the university's values of diversity and the inclusion and integrity that matter so much here in Coventry, where the city has, of course, the status, the city of peace and reconciliation. 
Ahmed is currently reading philosophy and theology at Oxford University and recently has been elected as president of the historical Oxford Union. After university, he plans a career in humanitarian work, either with a large organization such as the UN or by starting his own foundation. We wish him every success as he continues his studies and works towards his future career and to a more peaceful world. We'll no doubt be one that only serves to further advance global peace and global tolerance. In recognition of his significant contribution to the promotion of peace and tolerance, Coventry University, by decision of the academic board, has the privilege of conferring the degree of Doctor of Letters, honoris causa, on Ahmed Nawaz. Thank you very much. Firstly, I would like to thank Coventry University for this immense honor, an honor that I will treasure for the rest of my life. There was a point in life when I thought it was all over. I was lying in a hospital bed in Birmingham, having lost my brother and most of my friends to a massacre that took place in my school. I was told that my arm where I was shot might need to be amputated, and that I might be handicapped for the rest of my life, both physically and mentally. My family was in pieces. My parents had lost a child and had another child on a hospital bed fighting for his life. I thought maybe it won't all be so bad. Maybe we could all try to forget about this incident and move on with our lives as a family. Until one day, when I, when I was on the hospital bed and my parents walked into the hospital room, I glance at them and I see an agonizing pain in their eyes, a pain that I perhaps never really noticed before. It was, of course, the pain of losing a child and having another child lying on a hospital bed. In that moment, I realized that millions of people around the world suffered through the same thing every day. And that was the moment when my life totally changed. I decided that what I wanted was not to live my life trying to forget about this incident. Now I wanted to make sure that no one in this world has to go through the same thing ever again. That is when I set out on my journey to make our society and this world a more peaceful place. As a student myself, trying to uh, studying for my GCSEs, then my international baccalaureates, and then university admissions, it was always a very tough balance to balance both studies and the campaign. But at no point, at no point, I ever felt like giving up because I knew that if I didn't do this, that if young people didn't do this, no one ever will, and we will continue to suffer from similar injustices every day. I thought it was more of a responsibility that I had to fulfill, something that I owed to the society, to the wider society. Today, standing here, receiving this huge honor, I look back at the last six years or so, and I feel incredibly, incredibly proud to have taken this path in life. I owe every bit of the strength that I have to my parents who are here today, who have always encouraged me in taking this path and pursuing it. I must thank my teachers who have been an incessant support of inspiration and, su and support. 
and my friends and supporters who have always been standing by my side in this journey. I hope to do a lot more in the future, and I'm hoping that a lot more of you young people here today will join me in this cause. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that um, some fantastic story. Uh, we shall now continue the proceedings with the presentation of the awards for the Faculty of Arts and Humanities. We begin with the Postgraduate Certificate in Education. It is my pleasure to invite Gerant Jones, the Executive Director and Associate Pro Vice Chancellor, to present the awards, which you'll find on page 19 of your brochure. Thank you. Postgraduate Certificate in Education. Rihanna Alicia Abdar. Saika Ahmad. Jesse Lee Austin. Alice Bainbridge. Kate Bearcroft. Lorna Bull. Sean Chatha, Eleanor Cullen, Aisha Debar, <laughs> Molly Fossey, Luke James Thomas Griffin, Bethan Enid Patrick, Simrun Sankera, Akshay Savani, <laughs> Megan Schemmel, Joel Chienda, <laughs> Lucy Georgina Bacon. Thanugan Prisantha Kumar, Yasmin Akhtar, <laughs> Postgraduate Certificate in Academic Practice in Higher Education, Rachel Catherine Cooper, <laughs> Kerry Herbert, Christopher Kent, Nicola Jane Murphy, Nitish Gur, Hope McMillan, Harinda Singh Sagu, Esme Sperling, Bhavani Subramaniam. Master of Public Administration in Global Diversity Governance, Emily Puffett, Daniel Singleton, Master of Arts in Maritime Security, Fern Attry. It is now the university's great pleasure to confer an honorary Doctor of Letters on Mindu Hornick in recognition of her significant contribution to raising the profile of reconciliation and tolerance. Pro Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, distinguished friends, colleagues, 
graduands, guests, and, and family. Allow me to introduce one of our honorary graduands here to celebrate with our students today, Mindu Hornick, MBE. Mindu was born in former Czechoslovakia in 1929 and grew up in the Carpathian Mountains. At the age of 13, together with her mother, sister, and two brothers, she was imprisoned at Auschwitz-Birkenau and survived there until the liberation of the camp in 1945. Only Mindu and her sister survived the concentration camp. After her liberation, she returned to Prague, but by 1948, during the Soviet occupation, she was forced to flee to live with an uncle in Birmingham, where she lives today. Mindu was recently awarded an MBE for her two decades of work as a Holocaust educator. Teaching of the dangers of intolerance and hatred, she attends schools to give talks about her experiences and how, as we've sadly seen in these past few weeks in Ukraine, extreme prejudice and discrimination can lead to crimes against humanity if people stand by and allow them to happen. Mindu works as a global ambassador for the Anne Frank Trust and the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust and was invited to light one of 70 candles designed by Sir Anish Kapoor for the 70th anniversary of the Holocaust. I will say here that I read Anne Frank's diary as a girl at about the same age that Mindu was sent to Auschwitz. Reading Anne Frank's story was one of the stimuli that led my young self to commit to the pursuit of peace and tolerance. Mindu's work in making these stories of Holocaust survivors accessible, including stories of herself and Frank and others, is crucial in today's complicated world. By telling these stories, she strengthens the cause of peace and what this city, this university, and my research center for trust, peace, and social relations remain committed to. A monument in Srebrenica exhorts us to remember. To remember, I'll say that again. Because so that crimes against humanity that have occurred in, in Auschwitz, in, in Bosnia, in Syria, and now in Ukraine never happen again to no one and nowhere. At this point in human history, peace may seem unrealistic, but Mindu shows us that reconciliation is indeed possible and worth striving for. This is perhaps today demonstrated in the voices of those ordinary Russians, including in Coventry's twin city of Volograd, friends who in the face of peril protest for peace. Having dedicated her life to educating others of the dangers of intolerance and hatred, Mindu's experiences and her work reflect Coventry's unique status as a city of peace and reconciliation and the university's values of diversity, inclusion, and integrity. I am delighted to say that we have known of Mindu's crucial work for many years, having been one of the first universities at which she spoke about her experiences. And we are honored that Mindu can join us again today. In recognition of her significant contribution to raising the profile of reconciliation and tolerance, Coventry University, by decision of the academic board, has the privilege of conferring the degree of Doctor of Letters, honoris causa, on Mindu Hornick.
you said you would lower it. Can we lower mm -hmm. this? Yes. So you said you could lower it. Okay, so can I go in here? Yes. Um, good morning, Pro Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, friends, colleagues, and graduates and guests. I am privileged to be standing here today in Coventry Cathedral. This amazing building adjacent to the ancient cathedral, which was built in the 11th century and destroyed by intensive bombing, uh, bombing of the city in November 1940. As we survivors, finally emerged and rose from the ashes of the death camps, the new cathedral was reborn next to the ruins of the old one in 1962. This city benefited from, re from action reconciliation service for peace, from uh, for, uh, for peace, a German peace reconciliation founded in 1958 by the Senoid of the Evangelical Church in Germany to confront the legacy of Nazism. German volunteers came to help to rebuild the Coventry Cathedral in 1961. And since then, volunteers from this organization came to Coventry on a 12 month peace and social interaction. I have been fortunate to have the benefit of engaging with, with three of those volunteers when they were, have been here. The girls volunteered to assist me in computer tasks, which were beyond me, and they were keen to know more about me and to exper of my experiences and during the time of getting to know each other. I am humbled to accept this great honor bestowed upon me today at Covent, from Coventry University, which both pleases me and frightens me. It frightens me because I wonder, do I have the right to represent the multitude who have perished? Do I have the right to accept this great honor on their behalf. I do not. This would be presumptuous. No one can speak for the dead. No one may interpret their mutilated dreams and visions. It pleases me because I may say this honor belongs to all the survivors of their children and through us, to all the Jewish people with whose identity I have always identified. I remember the bewilderment. I remember the anguish of parting from my mother and two little brothers. It all happened so fast. The ghetto, the deportation, the sealed cattle trucks, the fiery altar upon which the history of our people and the future of mankind were meant to be sacrificed. I remember asking myself, can this be true? Is this the 20th century or the Middle Ages? Who could allow such crimes to be committed? How could the world remain silent? What have I 
play down with my future. I tell myself, I must try to keep the memory alive. I will fight those who will forget, because if we forget, we are guilty. We are accomplices. And then I tell myself how naive I was to think that the world did not know and remained silent. And this is why I swore never to be silent whenever and whenever human beings endure suffering and humiliation. Of course, because I'm a Jew, profoundly rooted in my people's memory and traditions. My first loyalty is to the Jewish fears, the Jewish needs, and the Jewish cries. I belong to a traumatized generation, one that experienced the abandonment and the solitude of our people. But there are others who have experienced the same as me. There are none who feel more for the plight of the victims and survivors of Bosnia, Cambodia, Rwanda, and Darfur, as well as what is happening, what is happening today before our very eyes than the Holocaust survivors. Our personal testimonies always make a great impact on young people. We hope that education will bring meaning to the present and the future and endorse the world never again, which have been said so very frequently since the horrors of the Holocaust were revealed, and yet it seems no longer to mean anything. For the sake of humanity, it is essential that it does. By sharing our painful experiences, we are reminding people that the unbelievable happened to us and should never be allowed to happen again. And yet it does. Being here today and receiving this wonderful honor is an unforgettable day for me and my family. I sincerely appreciate it and thank you. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, thank you very much, Mindy, for sharing your experiences with us. Thank you also for lowering the microphone. Uh, we shall now continue with the proceedings um, for the presentation of the awards for CU Coventry. We begin with the Higher National Certificate in Applied Biosciences, and it is my pleasure to invite Jackie Mathers, Associate Pro Vice Chancellor, CU Coventry, to present the awards, which you will find on page 20 of your brochure. Higher National Certificate in Civil Engineering, Claire Dolan, Candy Humphreys, Christian Philip McMurty, Michael Andrew Newham, <laughs> Higher National Certificate in Counselling, Integrative Theory, Abda Supani, Higher National Certificate in Electromechanical Engineering, Patrick Hone. <laughs> Higher National Diploma in Public Health and Community Studies, Isabel Moraes. <coughs> Bachelor
Bachelor of Science in Biological and Chemical Sciences, Joshua Lumaka. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Counseling, Integrative Theory and Practice, Gemma Bachu. Rita Luisa Gentilcourt. Fiona Henry. Miran Katie Ann Howard, Rifat Jabin, <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Digital Design Consultancy, Nathan Hales, Bachelor of Arts in Early Childhood Development and Learning. Chantelle Farrell. Fatima Kanu. <laughs> Bachelor of Engineering in Electromechanical Engineering. Jake Court. Ethan Mason. Janusz Wojcicki. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Integrative Counseling Theory, Samsam Jama. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Law and Practice, Isaac Tosin Adegoki. Alinuswi Ngosi. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Management and Leadership. Mek Simbarashi Chinyama. Howard Floyd Delander Gale. Ashley Heenan. Dane Alexander Lee, Lucy Malpas, <laughs> Mohamed Zubir Mulan, Carlos Rodriguez, <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Marketing and Public Relations. Leonora Chatroli. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Professional Accounting. Mavish Ahmed. Samia Mia. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Digital and Technology Solutions. Raka Arif. Master of Arts by Research, Mark Thacker, in recognition of work entitled Creating Mobile and Open Form Music, Composing New Music Through the Lens of Brown, Feldman, Stockhausen and Fox. Master of Arts in Automotive and Transport Design, Sumed Madan Belsari. <laughs> Master of Arts in Communication, Culture and Media, Kaniz Fatima, Wanying Li, Komal Mehboob. Master of Arts in English Language Teaching and Applied Linguistics, Liang Zheng, Yunlin Wang. <laughs> 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 
Master of Arts in Interior Design, Ashvin Vibhu. Master of Arts in International Relations, Hefsiba Abasiakeme Olotu. Master of Arts in Automotive and Transport Design. Actually, I'll read this uh, postgraduate first. Postgraduate Certificate in Education. Araksan Mustafa Abu Bakar. Master of Arts by Research, Mark Thacker. In recognition of work entitled Creating Mobile and Open Form Music, composing new music through the lens of Brown, Feldman, Stockhausen, and Fox. to continue. Doctor of Philosophy, Sarah Jane Charles. In recognition of work entitled The Muopioid of the People, Rituals and the Psychobiology of Social Bonding. Doctor of Philosophy, Saima Nafis, in recognition of work entitled Promoting Healthy Aging in Care Homes, Mixed Methods Feasibility Exploration of Engaging Older Residents in Arts-Based Activities Using Digital Health Technology. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy, Elizabeth Ann Norman, in recognition of work entitled An Examination of IGOs and NGOs, Understanding of Children's Involvement in Somali Piracy Networks and Their Land-Based Responses. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy, Dominic Waldock, in recognition of work entitled A Practice-Based Investigation in Composing Contemporary Horror Film Music for the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy, Kira Grunwald, in recognition of work entitled Trust Repair in the Banking Sector, a multi-stakeholder perspective on trust and control mechanisms. Huge congratulations to all of you who've received awards today, and my best wishes to students listed in the order of proceedings but who were unable to attend. As this special awards ceremony draws to a close and you begin your personal celebrations, I would like to finish with a few thoughts of my own. It's truly a privilege to witness the individual successes that each of you have made. I am proud to be part of the leadership for this modern, innovative and forward-thinking university. Our students are so diverse, drawn from all corners of the globe and from all walks of life. Every individual student, member of staff and visitor on campus helps to make Coventry the vibrant, friendly place we know and love. I trust you will take a piece of the university 
and your memories here with you as, the, as you leave the cathedral today. I know you will continue to enhance our reputation as you find your place in the world. Be proud of the part that Coventry University has played in shaping your success, as we are proud to have helped in shaping the people you have become. Our doors will always be open to you, and we look forward to sharing in your future successes. Well done.